so much wind power out west. Just the state of Montana or the state of Wyoming on their own can supply 10 to 15 percent of the country's electricity needs, even with the dawn of electric cars and other things. I see a sign through the trees on a building that says antiques way in the background. Snyder Avenue, we are in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Well, I am out in front of Antique Central. Antiques, collectibles, primitives, retro, nostalgia, and more, and heck yeah, we're open, so let's go see what that means. No, I don't mind. I, I just didn't want to do it without asking. Sure. A little ding on that. That happens with those. Oh, uh, yes, a factory in Sweden, Malmö, where my family are from originally. Hmm. Moorcroft. Hmm. Very likable. This is a multi dealer shop, and. They have a lot of cool things. I've always liked the crocus. This went as a match to a hall dinnerware pattern. Back in the 1930s, 55 for the hanging coffee dispenser. They're hard to find in good shape like that. Evening in Paris, there's a nice set there. I think the one bottle that's out is over here in display. They have a couple of sets in here that seem pretty nice for the price. I like the dye. As a lighter, that's neat. It says it's as is, but I still think it's cool. It does seem to have a crack, though. And the Christmas tree lighter is fun. I see I see a few things in here I definitely think I would like to get. This is a fun hardware store display turned into a, well, old hardware display. This is pretty, and $22. TR Imperial, probably. It's very thin. It's still nice, though, and a good color. Pretty tempted. Decanters are just not really out there like they used to be. This is a tilt-top table that turns into a bench. This one's hard rock maple, but it's based on an old design. 295 dovetail. This is Italian, I'm sure, because I have one for sale like it. Theirs is a better price than mine. 95, there should sell. I'm going to have to lower mine to their price, I think. True old antiques, we are where the West meets the Plains, and so we're going to see things from the 19th century, like this antique tin with the screen painting. Very pretty, $59. I like the use of the old basket tile in this mirror surround. 132, that could be a great decorator piece for that price. And then here's a lithophane. In a clock, a nice painting of the sailboat. Pompeian beauty, she is, isn't she? Nice slag glass lamp and a turn of the century American oak table with the very wide pith rays from the early oak, 265 The prices really are very good here, I have to say. And on the furniture. Oh, and I hope on this, because I love these. It's a little frayed on the handle. That's always a concern. And it's weak here. 65 yeah. Too bad. Look how beautiful that exotic bird is. These are also from the mid-1910s. Pearpoint. 95. There was a time Pierpoint would have sold for big money. Interesting sculpture here. Not too old, but it is cute for $28. Probably 1980s or 90s with that rubber ice bottom. Burley Winter, Kirksville, Ohio. This is a company that a lot of people mistake for being English, partly because of the variegated glazes and the molded but not as defined style that it had. $110, circa 1920s. It does have a mark on it. Also from Burley and Winter. 
They must have had good distribution here because a lot of the railroads ran right through Cheyenne, Union Pacific, now the BNSF. So here's another early winter piece that came over from Kirksville, Ohio for 135. 1920s or earlier, that seems correct. Look, okay, Jens, you know I love them. Let's see what the prices are. Fifty-five, that's right on. Ships have got a plenty. Sixty-five, I think we're in agreement on pricing. Nice piece of Roseville silhouette. As well as the fuchsia. This is one of the most popular patterns in the floral Roseville. And then this is Nilox Mission where where the swirl is actually part of the clay deposit. I can show you that by showing you the bottom. But it has a rim chip. That's unfortunate. I see why it's $25. I thought that was unbelievably cheap. Let's see this one. $85. Yes, and after 1934 because of the mark. Originally $2.25, I mean, that was not cheap, but neither was this process. That's why they ended up making the molded wear too, because they couldn't have survived if they had only had that to sell. Some very pretty furniture. I think they've chosen really well. If you're going to have furniture that isn't the style that's really popular right now, then go for things that really have style. And the people who love that will just not care whether it's in style or not. That's the great thing about old stuff. It doesn't have to be in style for someone to love it. It does not have to be trending. Goofus class, this is a decent piece for 39 less 50%. Minute hand is loose, unfortunate. Those are cute. But they were cheap, so that's going to happen. Everything's half off, though, and this is a piece of thin, and it's made in China. So I want you to see that, because yes, there has been some use of the Fenton name offshore now. You can tell the difference. I mean, it's heavy, it's thick, it's polished differently, kind of done quickly and pumped out. Hmm. Interesting. Montana Earth Vase, 1987. There were some pretty good potters in Montana and a modernist school there, and if it was related to them somehow, that would be a really good piece to be buying. I wish I knew a little more about it. I will have to see if I can research it while I'm here. Little theme set of shakers from the Nebraska State Fair around 1950. That one is the DDT sprayer. And this, I guess, is supposed to be an anthill, a beehive. I'm not sure those go together. They're not going with me together, that's for sure. Here's something to show you, because it's got a good label you don't see too often. This is Monmouth Pottery. Will not leak. That's because it's glazed on the inside as well. Having that overglaze is what keeps the pottery from leaking. Made in USA. Now, usually you're only going to see this mark. So if you see this, see that odd shaped cartouche that sort of forms to the letters made in USA, and they're all in caps, and they're all very uniform and blocky. If you don't have the benefit of this label, now you know how to see that something is Monmouth. I have to say, it's a nice piece. It's going to be $26 now. <laughs> Ooh, look at the bird. Ooh, look at the chip. Color, that happens a lot on the combs of these and the tails of mermaids. Those are places to check when you're out there shopping. This is something called floss. They did golden floss and red and black and green, and they did it on dishes, and I think it's cute. The decanters don't really sell for much, though, because they're not a great style otherwise. I finally sold my new model. And these would sell better if you have the legs. This one doesn't seem to have the legs either, so I'm going to leave it. Also, Kanawa. Very uniform pressed pattern that they did. You can see lots of mold lines in it. Very bright, sort of an odd color combination in a way. Kanawa was a little less expensive than some of the other glass makers, so 
you expect it to be off just a little bit and I would say that is off just a little in terms of color and design from say what Fenton was doing at the same time. Cute little McCoy little teapot. There's the mark. But even at half off I don't see anything I can make money on here so onwards and upwards because there's an upstairs. So let's go up here and see what it's like. This place used to be, I believe, a creamery, and I think it's two and a half stories, something like that. Ah, interesting. This looks similar to a piece of Red Wing I just bought, but it is Pacific of Los Angeles. Pacific number 3611. Pacific of LA was really good around the 30s and 40s. They were one of the big five California makers, but there's a chip. The dealer was kind and told us that and priced it accordingly. So, no shame to them, I just can't buy it. Louisville Stoneware, this is the one that is the survivor of the two Louisville companies making this where Mary Hadley, M.A. Hadley, just closed last month. Cal Style is part of Cal Originals. Three bucks is a great price, but I don't really need it. Chrysler Motors. That is their display at the Chicago World's Fair of 1933. An exhibit that should be seen by every visitor. I would have gone. They were making pretty cool cars considering what was going on in the world at that time. Let's see, this says Trafari and it's a belt shape. If that has the crown mark and isn't beaten up, I would get it. Mushrooms, we'll always look at those. This says it's Trafari. That's a poodle. This is Boucher. You know, these are average pieces by good companies. Vendome. So we're going to see if any of them are good enough because of the maker for us to go ahead and get. So here's how we jury some gold town jewelry. Look at the high points. It looks like the gold's worn off on this one, so that's out. High points on this one look pretty good overall. I don't see any real wear. Open flower. Strong Boucher mark. Class seems to work. Well, for $10, there's probably room in it because it's Boucher. This one's just cute, and I don't see any wear on it. I'm not sure it's by anybody good. It says it's unmarked. Ooh, well, let's wreck it, and then we'll have to buy it. Okay. Good thing this one's all metal. Well, it's constructed decently, and yeah, it's a mushroom. It's cool. I'm going to get it. Okay, so we have one yes, one maybe, and one out. This one says it's Trafari. Now look at the high points again, because this is supposed to be perfectly round, and if it doesn't look good, no one's going to buy it. It's a little uneven, but it looks like that's mainly the manufacturing. I think we're okay. It is Trafari with the crown, so it's before 1969. So that just made it a whole lot better, and it is a shape. I don't like the way it's presented on this card, but if you just had it on blue or dark color, I think it could pop, so yeah, for five bucks, why not? This one also is Trafari. This one is burnished. You have to be really careful to make sure these are not worn. But this one's pretty good. This wire seems awfully short, and so does this one. I just don't care for the design. That's out. And the poodle is small, and it's Avon, and I keep dropping things. This is not good. It's small, it's Avon. Nah. So, two yeses. I'm going to take the two obvious ones. I'm going to leave the Boucher and 
because it's ten dollars so it's not like it's a bargain these are pretty good deals I think okay so this horse is only 35 but we'll look at the gap this is newer big filing marks on the forehead it's not brand new it's heavy enough it might be 1950s 60s you know around here things don't rust so much I'm in Wyoming right now but this isn't going to be turn of the last century so 35 is a fair price but not a price I'm going to pay you know me and my obsession with square dishes and red wing even this nice basic rose pattern yes Charles Taylor did a lot of good designs $30 for all of that that's such a deal if you just wanted to use it every day and you could it could go in the dishwasher it doesn't have a metal rim it can go in the oven it's not lead in the glaze I think you could enjoy that this on the other hand a little fancier it has a registered date mark let's see what that is antique English transfer we're in the Byzantine pattern and see the R those numbers and letters tell when it was registered with the government of Queen Victoria she demanded the registry marks at a certain point I'd really like to buy this gold shelf and take it to Epic in Seattle or my mall space in Florida and use it. How much is the mirror? $18. Not bad. Gaudy Welsh. I saw some gaudy Dutch earlier that didn't have the luster on it. Oh, there's a very cute wicker lamp and look at this sweet little table what a nice size it's a little lady's writing desk and it's sold for 250 and i think that's a wonderful price somebody got a very nice deal on this this is quite old it's got the inlay in fruit wood nice pearl veneer you know there's some cracking but again this is an old piece let's see how we can open it it's fun to be able to snoop and know what they actually paid for something machine dovetailing so this is going to be and you notice all this is pretty uniform the turning so this is going to be late 19th century possibly early 20th I wouldn't think any earlier than 1890 and no later than about 1910 very sweet I'm glad someone gave that a new home this is on sale for 225 which for a lamp table is pretty good but you know they were done in plank construction and as things shrink they shrink along the grain so now there's a gap and that's a bit of a pain to have to seal but it can be done wicker table lamp from the 19 teens or 20s notice the silk starting to go this is weighted silk the Chinese put the the chemical to make the silk heavier because we started paying them by the pound instead of by length they weren't dumb unfortunately the chemical they use to make it heavier makes it dissolve over time so that will have to be replaced cute piece though and I like this hey everybody I like this dresser it's got the candle stands this is late Victorian maybe even 1900 early Edwardian but look at the interesting handles I think this is the thing that's the most unique to me it's almost like a drafting tool oh and it has its casters in here too and the key very nice yes yeah, so they're calling this East Lake which I guess it probably could be called it seems like it's got some spoon carving and I see that it's part of a bigger set with this bed which definitely has spoon carving so this is 1880s American it's actually a very handsome set I think if you had a bedroom you can actually sometimes adapt these frames to a queen size I don't think a king would look right 895 for the set ah plush toys of my generation mr. peanut Ronald McDonald for five dollars and even at that I'm going to leave him here believe it or not little green sprout there's a Ronald McDonald on steroids with the plastic head he really seems like something from a horror movie the Burger King can you imagine actually all of these would be great you could do a great horror movie based on all of these coming to life don't you think 
like Toy Story, but worse. Eskimo Pie Boy, that's cute. And it's $5. I mean, the prices are good on these if you collect this sort of thing. And there are people who do. And some plushes are actually starting to be worth a bunch of money. So don't think that just because it's a toy or looks like a doll or says Anna Lee that it's not worth anything because you might be surprised it is always worth looking. Even at old Raggedy Ann's. Above this, I like all the quilting in the background of this. It's very Eastery. This would have been for a spring newborn, probably around 1930. You can see by the type of fabric in the thin edge. But look at all the quilting and detail that went into all of this. And then the applied bunny and chick and the embroidery. It's very sweet. And it's only $40 because it's a crib size. But they could be really fun to make up into larger pieces, use as the centerpiece of a larger piece, or frame and hang on as a wall. They have a few cute ones here. That is a Knickerbocker Raggedy Ann sleeping bag for $85, by the way, which is spooky to me somehow. This little embroidered and quilted piece here, which is more of a 1950s piece, is $28, and hopefully their aspirations for their child came true because they wanted it to be gentle as a lamb, wise as an owl, and a swinger. Hmm. Well, there was the 70s. Over here is a neat bunch of furniture, including this, which is, I'm sure, a marriage of an old workbench tabletop. They said it's for display only, but it's great. I like the tacked sides on this old vacuum cleaner bench, $35. Says it's as is. I would just reupholster the top and rehinge it. It's got a good look. Rancho Grande. This is also just a display, but this is a great idea for people who do tools and farm stuff and flea markets where uh, maybe putting a few ladders in a car is easier for you than having a bunch of shelving. You just bring boards and voila, you make shelves, uh, especially if you have things that are non-breakable or that you're really looking for a rustic look to display. It's not a bad idea. Okay, let's see how much this is. Ooh, $8. I'll take that. Unless there's holes, that's great because it's a natural material. The colors are good. It's probably 1960 vintage. It's not super new. It's not day glow like the 70s. So this is good. Stereo cars. I sure haven't found anything interesting in them lately. 18 for the old Globe Bank. Yeah, those are not priced in a way where I can buy them. Ah oh, yes, here we go. Gold Crackle, $22 a pair. This is similar to Weeping Gold. Somebody had a lot of fun making those. They're cute. Look, it's Bob Newhart's bathroom scale. Ooh, wow, I'm a heifer. It's all these heavy things I'm carrying. Oh, it's also set to like three pounds to start with. I have a bunch of this I need to get out and put on sale for a consigner. It's really fun. It's very springy. This is Metlock's Poppy Trail Pastel. They want $1.95 for this set. I think I have some serving pieces. These folks don't. Sometimes the glaze is so thick you can't read the marks. Sometimes they're not marked, but sometimes they have a great mark. Poppy Trail by Metlock's, made in USA. This is when they established themselves in the 30s as an up-and-comer, and they were a major powerhouse in California dinnerware production through the 1980s. The only reason they went away was an unpleasant situation over a divorce in the family, at which point Treasurecraft pretty much took over the accounts that were left. Well, this is pretty with the Virginia Creeper on it. This is Weller's Best Line, and it's 1920s era. They did a lot of very pretty metallic glazes in the late teens and 20s. And I really like this lamp with the challenge of the mountain lions. 
priced at 125 and it's been rewired. That seems like a very reasonable price. I always like these 1960s vintage photo shades. $48 on this one. Nice Appaloosa there. Twenty-eight on the study book ends. Those are cute. And this is Peters and Reed, another one of the Zanesville potters. But you'll notice they tended to do this moss Aztec, where they do the green background to make it look like moss. It gave it an appearance of being venerable when it was new. Of course, if you clean this one up, the green would remain, and then it would look that way instead of just dusty. A little bit of Christmas stuff, particularly. These gals down here are cute. And some snow babies. I like that tree topper too with the angels. I guess it's a spinner die cut. That's pretty neat. $25. That does not seem like a bad price for an interesting older piece of Christmas stuff. A nice Rebecca at the Well cameo. Deep carved there with the big frame it, with the seed pearls on the side. I like that. Priced at $125. That's very pretty. I'm tempted to buy this. This one's a classic. It's the Daisy Topiary Cookie Jar by Metlocks again. Interesting that they have the distribution here again coming up from Los Angeles by train. I guess it makes sense it would get to Cheyenne. It's going to be half that price, which would be $24.50. My mother and my sister are both Sally, and this looks like my sister at about that age. I should get this for them. Only thing is, the Sallys I know won't take a plane. So maybe it's Barky and his friends instead. Barky sounds annoying. Hmm. Tom the Piper's son, 1904 Christmas, that's $16. That's in very nice condition. Unterrible. Well, let me not be the judge of that. That's great, though. Father Bear and Mother Bear, very cute. Picture and coloring books from the 1930s. I like Spelter. This is 85. It's supposed to be Hannibal. This would have been on a clock originally. Wow, he's got a pretty fearsome face. This is well cast, I have to say. This is nicely done. I could see it being presented just the way it is, but it is $85 already, and I honestly wouldn't charge a whole lot more than that. Neat piece, though. Well, this is a better deal than what I paid for the one that I have for sale, and I wish I had gotten this one instead. It's an old sausage press. This one's older. It's got a nice painted front, which I think would have made it more interesting. Mine just has the embossing that you see on this one. It's also got the red painted stripes. So the painted pieces make this 1880s or 90s as opposed to early 1900s like mine. It's got the grinder and if it has the spigot then it's complete. Nice brass scale for a candy store or something like that. $59.95 on that one. $32 on this, but it's as is, no face. Speaking of as is, this guy looks like he's about to have a terrible accident. Don't let your bulldog drive drunk, especially on a flat tire. This is from my childhood, Woodsy Owl. Give a hoot, don't pollute. I hope you're getting the effect. You may not, actually. The camera may not be able to do the same thing your eyes can do in person. We'll be curious to see how that worked out. This is fantastic because it is shaped like a Zeppelin. It's a Lesterware 1930s mustard pot with a sugar, or mustard pot with a salt and pepper. But the Zeppelin carrier is really unusual, and even at $45, I have to admit I'm tempted by that. I also like this McCoy Lily for only $16. If that's the wall pocket and it's not broken, I think I might buy a couple of things out of this place. Key CMW. And how much is this radio while we're at it? Well, this has a fun story. It's called Her Brother's Clothes. It's copyrighted 1910, and it was sophomore clothes, so this was done as a fashion illustration by E. Savage for the Chicago company that made a lot of this stuff at the time. This particular one is signed by a bunch of people because a woman from Laurel, Montana, went to fashion school in Spokane for a year and had all her classmates sign it at the end. So, 
cute piece, not in great shape, but just a fun story. 145, great graphic. A cute pair of framed trade cards from the 1880s for fashionable hatters in Chicago. This one's fun because, of course, our prim ancestresses never gossiped. This one's called The Last Word, and it is two women standing at the fence rail in their bonnets gossiping. It's got a lot of stains, unfortunately. It is a Wallace Nutting. It's signed. The image is not stained, but it's $95. And then here's two more framed trade cards. Very pretty. Also millinery. Look at the great hats. The Fantasia. The one on the left is the Phantasma. Wow, imagine wearing the Phantasma. You would be phantasmagorical. And the one on the right is Celia. Much more demure. Only three birds were killed to make that happen. Well, this place has a lot of fun stuff. I like this painted trash can that has a 50s look to it. Nice old scales here. Let's see what the one behind is priced. Oh, that's more than the one underneath, but I like the one underneath. It's big. Oh yes, machine wear. I haven't seen this in a long time. Lots of interesting little scenics on top of those. Various places in the British Isles. Various places in Europe. I like the string holder in particular. That's the most valuable one at a hundred. And some very pretty silver plate. When you get into Victorian silver plate, the figural pieces are still really beautiful and to me worth collecting. $27 on the napkin ring in front. I like the boy riding the dolphin. And down here we have some nice salt dips. All 1890s. Only $12 each. Seems very good. Those used to be so much more expensive. J.C. Penney's was the one store that sold the 49 star flag. I think they thought Hawaii was never going to happen. $20 each. That's about what they run now. I think of this sort of thing when I think of the plains and the mountain states. This very opulent Victorian throne-like presence that it seemed that people had the opportunity to set themselves up in this new guise if they came west and made their fortune. Cute 1950s Salt Lake guy who is going to tell you what to order at the grocery store. There's a big old dollhouse for you, with all the furniture it looks like. A bunch of cupies. A lot of these look like 1950s and 60s Japan. Nice to have this extra room. I mean, they've got a lot of fun stuff in here. It really depends on what you're collecting for. Like this, for example, seems to be some sort of a sifter screen for mining. So if you're setting up like a themed restaurant in a mining town or a tourist town that is known for mining, well, there's a great prop. Or you could have it at home and use it as a table or some sort of a base for a bistro table if you wanted to put high chairs. I mean, it's just interesting to me to see people taking these things and finding ways to alter them for modern use without actually destroying their original function or purpose <laughs> so you don't destroy the collector value. Spanish leather decanter bottle from the 1960s for 20 bucks. 75 on the ship clock. Bakelite chopper there for nine dollars. These are probably some local artists, but I think they're cool and they've got a look to them. Seventy-five dollars. One of a kind, I imagine it is. Well, let's see if there's anything interesting in dinnerware. There's a yellow Francoma honey pot, priced at twenty. That's about the right price. Even the plainer old coolers in good condition are now big money because people will decal them. Wish they wouldn't, but they do. The angular arms in back of this make me think that this is pre-World War II. It is priced at $195. We're in the season where wicker starts to sell in a lot of different parts of the country. Because the weather is starting to get nice. This bespeaks of a very short Victorian man who had something to prove. Look at the strength and permanence and the way this was designed. The buckles are made to look old intentionally. 
This is all supposed to be very medieval looking. These bat-like escutcheons are really amazing to me. I mean, I really love this piece of furniture, but look how short it is. I mean, this would be a child-sized desk these days. And that is the problem, unfortunately. Some things don't translate into modern times just because the way people live and the proportions are different now. This is really cool on top of here, though. I have not seen an old Japanese piece like this. Tokyo HK Japan. This is an ice crusher. You turn it by hand. It looks like it would have been made before the Second World War, judging by the castings. Likely used in some place like a fish market or some other commercial institution where ice would have been something required to be on hand often. Possibly a restaurant as well. Really neat piece, priced at $2.25. How do you price a piece like that? I've never seen one in my life. I can't imagine there's very many left in Japan, if any, because, you know, they went through terrible wars and stuff like this got melted down to make other things. So I, I wonder if we'll ever see another one of these. It's actually kind of intriguing in that manner. It's one of the things I love. You never know when you come into a place like this when you're going to turn around the next corner and see something that maybe you'll never see again. Miniature dioramas were something that guys in particular really enjoyed making in the 1970s and 80s. And a lot of those fellows have passed on and there's too many for their families to keep so we're seeing them coming out onto the market now. But miniatures are really fun. There's also 1930s and 40s and 50s handmade dollhouses. There's a lot of fun things to collect with childhood stuff. And miniatures personally have always been something I've enjoyed. As well as cast iron. I like the two stoves here. The one on the left, the small one, is more commonly seen, but the Kent with the opening door for $45 and all that paint is a pretty good price. It's in great condition. These are Joan Walsh Angland figurines. You are going to see these out there. They're selling them for $5 each. They are made in Japan, but they were done by Determined Productions that also did the Snoopy and Peanut stuff in the early 70s. So it's a very lightweight ceramic. They had their adherence at the time. They're cute. I don't see a ton of them anymore. The book ends here, again, for $5 each. This is probably something well worth getting. Particularly the book ends, I should say. And look at the pretty and graceful figures dancing on this antique toy piano, which unfortunately is as is. and occasionally plays if it feels like it. The wood toy for Occident Flower, the advertising piece for $18, is pretty cute. And I like this wooden pull toy grasshopper. All right, well, more upstairs. <laughs> I blame you YouTubers for me buying things like Joan Walsh Anglin figures, but the truth is, is that you're getting me to look at things that are beyond what I usually see and Whenever we stretch ourselves, we start getting interested in other people's collections and other things that we have not maybe encountered ourselves. And that's part of the real joy and fun of doing this, so I don't really mind at all. Well, that's the kind of shopping I need to be doing. Lots of little stuff, fun things that I can triple my money on. This is the ticket. Hide behind the van and try to talk. It's very windy here in Wyoming. Check me out in the social media links you see in the description. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!